Hello and thank you for joining us. This is Off the Press and PLOS TV Africa. We'll take a look at the headlines in the papers and with the help of our guest, today we have public affairs analyst Bola Oba. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, he'll be helping us make sense of these headlines. We'll go straight to the nation newspaper. Uh, the big one here is banks, firms, government offices, free to reopen for businesses. That's um, uh, still on the relaxation. Uh, we have six weeks gradual easing of lockdown beginning on Monday. Uh, that's on the front page of the Nation newspaper. That's sitting on the screen now. And just above the masthead, you're looking at a governor's interstate movement ban not effective. Customs block trucks returning oil rice. Minister folds NABDA. That's another one. Shareholders applaud UBA's performance. Zenit Bank makes 166.8 billion naira in first quarter. Uh, some business talk for you there. A breakdown of the figures, um, the, uh, should I say, infection rate of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've crossed the 3 million mark globally. And in Nigeria, we are over the 1,700 mark as of today. Uh, there is another one on the front page, just beneath that picture. Uh, we have social distancing, Lagos bans Okada, recreation centers, beauty salons, bars remain closed, schools, churches, mosques, others cannot reopen, uh, commercial vehicles restricted, keke to carry two passengers. Uh, those are some of the uh, headlines. And of course, underneath that breakdown of figures, we have uh, influx of Zamfara indigents into Oshun ruffles feathers. Uh, Nigeria records daily highest ever coronavirus at 196 cases. All right, uh, Bala, let's get your thoughts on, let's start with the relaxation of lockdown as uh, captured with a big one. Banks, firms, government offices, free to reopen for business. About time the banks resumed operations because the most debilitating part of the lockdown has been the fact that the inter the inter uh, change banking operations uh, was suspended. And because transactions could not be done between banks, the lockdown was was very, 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 very in, negatively impactful. So that banks would be commencing operations that in itself is, um, but we must come to the realization that we are dealing with an invisible enemy that is still out there, ravaging its most potent format, and that it behoves any sensible human being to engage the opportunity of going out with a degree of sobriety and the degree of circumspection that it entails when one is dealing with such a ravenous, a, a, a ravenous phenomenon. So as an entrepreneur, I'm happy that the lockdown is gradually being, being on, 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 on wound, but I must also emphasize the fact that as a human being, and an intellectually solid human being, for that matter, the phenomenon we are combating is not something to be taken lightly. All right, let's look at the um, social distancing for Lagos, the clear outline of who is to move and who is not to move. Uh, Keke do carry us to Okada, uh, that's local uh, motorcycle band. Uh, we also have churches and other uh, social gatherings uh, remaining uh, banned for now. Um, what level of compliance do you expect to see? Uh, to be very honest with you, I'm not too optimistic about the level of compliance, the negotiations by the very nature of their, of their anti-establishment predisposition would, would give to 
the protocols, detailed protocols enumerated on how to gradually phase out the lockdown. Um, I don't see an average Keke Marwa operator just wanting to take two passengers uh, because he or she would naturally believe that with an extra one passenger more, he could make more money. And indeed, the fare he may want to charge the two may be so debilitating that people may not even want to board. That's number one. Number two is uh, regarding the religious centers. I want to believe that the level of compliance will still hold in some respects for, for those ones. But when it comes to the protocols on public transportation and the, the, profound, the profound dichotomy in the existential circumstances of those who were given the protocol and the reality of those for whom the protocol is given. My sister, I am not too optimistic about uh, the transportation beat of the protocols. All right. Let's... Not that negotiations, not that negotiations have death wish, but they are existentially and circumstantially subjected to some realities that those of us, those of us who are middle, middle, upper middle class cannot identify with. Uh, the best way for the governor to have known that would be to surreptitiously go to Oshodi or CMS on Monday morning without too much of his uh, security infrastructure and go see the circumstance that people would, or Balende, Oshodi, CMS, and see the circumstance that people would have to go through to get to their offices. I'm not too optimistic. All right, let's, let's move on to the Punch newspaper and take a look at some of the headlines. Um, this one, still on the relaxation, is captured but rephrased on the Punch newspaper. FG directs banks, government offices, firms to reopen Monday. Uh, that's uh, a rehash of what we had um, on the Nation newspaper. Uh, that's it on your screen as well. It has three riders, though. Uh, schools remain shut. Public transports to operate 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., uh, Kanu must accept medical autopsy results, says presidency. Ban on interstate movement, not enough to curb uh, COVID-19. That's uh, the Nigerian Medical Association speaking this morning. And you also see the suspects being parodied in Kaduna on the front page in that picture. Um, let's flip to the top and see what's at the top of the paper now. All right, um, FG to cut agencies, reduce governance cost, that's minister. Controversy over atheists arrested for blaspheming Prophet Muhammad. Extortion, IG deploys x squad monitoring units in Lagos, Portakot, others. And then just at the top of that, you see debt servicing may gulp 75% government revenue by 2024. That's a new report. Details of it is on page 23 uh, of the paper. We come down now below the picture. Uh, we see uh, customs reject 1,800 bags of rice returned by Oyo. Controversy continues. Equity commissioners have doctors reduced ransom to 15 million. Power Me suspends aid for trivializing anti-COVID-19 measure. We also have other ones here. Some will lose suspense or CADA. We've taken that story in the previous paper. Manufacturers, govs in talks to reopen shot factories. A whole lot about um, rejigging our economy this morning. Uh, well, uh, let, let me uh, allow you to pick the one that um, just caught your attention from the uh, headlines that I've just read out. Oh, the one that has caught my attention is actually the the loftiness, the hollowness of the interstate, uh, interstate commutation lockdown uh, that the governors agreed a couple of days ago and announced to the public. Uh, we have reported instances of how some, uh, some unscrupulous security elements 
were frisking transporters and allowing them to pass the Niger Bridge. We, in the last couple of days, saw the incident of a boy, a young man who moved all the way from Lagos via Abel Kuta to Adoekiti. Indeed, the case was so comical. The father stood on principle. That was the kind of parenting that we got when we were growing up. The father stood on principle, but the sloppy equity official, thank God it's been suspended now by the governor, the sloppy equity official was so comical about it that he traduced the importance of his role. You know, but having said that, instances such as that have convinced me that the so-called interstate lockdown is almost becoming farcical, becoming a joke. That is actually the most disturbing piece for me amongst all the headlines we've reeled out. Uh, the fact that Nigeria's debt profile and our debt management and our debt management uh, profile would increase is almost inevitable. Um, I am one who believes that for a country that was dependent on a one product uh, revenue source for so long, and given the international situation of that uh, market situation of that product now, uh, we have just uh, gotten ourselves into the double whammy. You know, the whammy of the, the whammy of the, uh, you know, uh, SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, issue, and a very dysfunctional, uh, a very dyslexic economy that, uh, that can never move at the very, at the pace of a well-groomed and well-structured economy. So, all right, um, let's look at this, um, story on extortion, what the police um, authority is doing to try and control it. Um, um, the Punch newspaper um, has the IG deploys escort monitoring unit in Lagos, Portakot, and others. Uh, that's um, one I would like you to quickly uh, touch on. The issue of extortion still remains, even in this lockdown. Um, what's your take on this measure by the uh, police authorities? It's a commendable, it's a commendable de development. I really want to believe that the IG and his, um, his uh, operatives are, are serious on this. Um, to be honest with you, we've seen a circumstance where when you deploy people to go to go enforce a rule in Nigeria. It's not peculiar to the police. In fact, uh, of recent, the LNC, the, the Lagos contraption, security contraption, the Lagos neighborhood, uh, this thing, some of their members too were, were creating uh, blockades in neighborhoods and were starting people. You know, it's just too typical too typical of how our system works. People take advantage of others. People want to use any modicum of authority at their disposal, not to enforce the integrity of the law they are supposed to enforce, but to extort people. So I am one who believes that there is no responsible policing authority on the face of the earth that does not have a mechanism to also Test the integrity, the party's integrity of those posted to uh, places like that. So if the if the IG is about is doing is set to do that now, I am impressed. But you know, in Nigeria, never celebrate until you until you've gotten your results. Right, uh, ideas too too many good ideas are always out there, but. You know, until it's done, I'm circumspect, but it's, it's, it's a move in the right direction. All right, let's go to the Guardian newspaper now, um, the big one here. How COVID-19 worsened oil aviation sectors 
4.4 trillion naira debt it means we're in deeper uh, than ever before. It has three riders, uh, concerns about CBN's capacity to meet Forex demand, ban others in distress over 6 billion naira monthly salary. Uh, we already know that some airlines are cutting um, laying off staff at the moment. Um, Naira heading to post-2016 era closes at 460 Naira to a dollar. Just above the masthead, we're looking at Lagos River. Ten others shot out as FD disbosses a 43 billion Naira World Bank performance grant. PTF unveils sector-specific guidelines for reopening the economy. Uh, Labour CSOs float pressure group to protect vulnerable Nigerians. How pandemic holds new economic opportunities for Nigeria, third world. That should be an interesting read. Uh, you'll find um, um, details of it on uh, page four of the paper. Well, uh, let me ask you, um, does the pandemic really hold any new economic opportunity for the world as it stands, do you think? Every circumstance on the face of the earth, every circumstance presents an opportunity for an entrepreneurially innovative mind to, to seize an opportunity. Um, one who believes, just as we were talking earlier on about the inevitable devastation that is presently ravaging the aviation industry, and let me be very honest with you, until a vaccine is perfected in about one and a half years' time to two years' time, the aviation industry locally and globally will be utterly, utterly traduced, utterly damaged. However, as an entrepreneur, I am one who believes that an average person listening to us this morning should in the days that we have been at home have thought through one or two things in his or business model. Because all business models have been disrupted now. We are in the age now of disruptive capitalism. All business models have been disrupted and yet businesses are to function. However, human interactivity would have to reduce. That is why some of us who deployed an online training infrastructure for some of our businesses about four years ago, we are now in the lockdown making money. Some of us who developed an app for some of our businesses some years ago when people were thinking, ah, it was too futuristic, uh, it was too idealistic, we are now making money. You, you understand what I'm saying? So... Every crisis presents an opportunity for a very innovative entrepreneurial mind to make money. However, I am not one who would foolishly tell Nigerians that it's easy because people seldom think beyond the norm. Okay, um, I think, oh, the, okay, um, well, the network seem to has gone off. Um, let's see if we can reconnect with him quickly. While well, we'll take a quick look at some of these uh, headlines, um, otherwise um, we would uh, be wrapping things up. Uh, the Guardian newspaper, we're still looking at it, uh, some headlines here. Uh, Lagos business open uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. from next week. I understand that Bola is back. Bola, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, so I, I want to ask you quickly, still on the Guardian newspaper, um, the World Bank performance grant uh, captured thus Lagos, Rivers, 10 others shut out as federal government disbosses a 43 billion naira World Bank performance grant. Um, how familiar are you with the subject? I to be very honest with you, there are some criteria set, and the states that have been enumerated as the beneficiary states are states that have. Uh, that, that are said to have made the markers for the trans. Hello, can you hear me? 
Trust me. Um, okay, um, I think I'll just um, thank, uh, thank you, Bola. Can you hear me? Thank you, Bola. All right, um, thank you in absentia. Um, I guess the network has uh, taken him off. I'll just take a quick glance at the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune, and then we wrap things up. How banks, government offices will operate, will operate from Monday as FG releases guidelines to ease the lockdown. Almost all the papers have it. Um, Somolu announces new measures to ease lockdown. Same. Uh, CBN resu resumes dollar sales for SMEs, school fees, even though we know that schools remain shut as of today. Naira falls to 450 Naira. Uh, the previous paper was uh, looking at 460 Naira, so uh, just a margin of 10. FG uh, disbosses a 43.41 billion Naira grant to 24 eligible states. At the top of the paper, we have COVID-19. Oshun raises alarm as Zamfara indigents sneak into state, deploys Amotekun at borders mining sites. Um, hostile on COVID-19, why Nigerians talking about black seed oil? Why are Nigerians talking about black seed oil? Uh, well, let's find out what it is so when you uh, uh, read on uh, page 30 of the paper. I think we have the opportunity to thank Gola properly. Gola, can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay. Um, did you manage to get any of the headlines I talked about uh, before? I got, I got the number. Yes, so you. it depends on which one are you particularly interested in. Um, okay, let me see if I can just, um, why Nigerians are talking about black seed oil, um, or just on a signing out note, have you heard about this uh, black seed oil uh, for possibly, I suspect, uh, treatment for COVID-19? We've had all speculations about some of, our, some of the uh, agricultural produce uh, from this part of the world, we've had about turmeric, we've had about uh, garlic, we've had about ginger, we've had, we've had about black seed oil. The only thing I want to tell an average Nigerian now is map out strategies, how you can get those things, and make sure that you have an interface in the northern hemisphere of the world where those things may be needed to, to send to them an end forex. People must learn to end forex now because the sole mechanism through which we end forex is in Tatars now. And that is why the value of the Naira is depreciating relative to other foreign exchange currencies. So if you love yourself, don't just read it as a news, read it as a news but also map out strategies to harness the inherent business opportunities. All right. Thank you very much, Bella, for your time with us, despite the poor network. Thank you for your privilege. And it's a wrap for today. Headlines Review comes up again tomorrow morning, every weekday at 8.30 a.m. We'll see you again soon. Please stay tuned. And remember... Stay home, save lives. My name is Felicity Izewike.